So now let me move to Crystal River Models uh, Build Along with Seth Johnson of the uh, Small Coal Shed. So Seth, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to start this segment. Um, we're scrolling video here, so I'll be available for questions afterward, but I hope everyone enjoys the start of the build. This is sheet one. Sheet one comprises uh, some basswood, uh, about 132nd. And this is the floor you can see here, and the uh, ceiling joists and braces. Some excellent material to work with. We like the basswood. Sheet two, which usually does not appear in this sort of long, skinny format, but there are times when all you have left of a material is uh, an odd shape. So you reformat your plans and you go that way with it. This was one of those times. This is the walls, um, front and rear and the sides. And you've got uh, the fascia there in the corners. You've got the door, a Z brace for the door, some additional bracing for the outside and pieces of trim. And also some boards that will go into the door. We'll show you how that works uh, a little later on. This is made of 164th plywood. It is the worst substance ever. We really dislike working with it, but when you're working with something like this kit that might be uh, stained instead of painted, we'll paint our version, but it can be done with stain and looks really nice when it's done that way. You need what the wood offers, what the plywood offers, and that is genuine wood grain that can come out with staining. So this kit can turn out really nicely painted or stained, and it's all because we take it on the chin for you and use 164th ply which again is awful. We hate it. And because we hate it, we do all the parts that we can get away with in laser board instead. This is 164th laser board. You've got the uh, sub roof here. There'll be roofing laid on top of it. You can see notches here pre-cut for the, uh, the ceiling joists, um, the braces. And then these little herringbone shapes will go on the inside of the door frames and provide places to put boards that hold in the coal in the coal shed. So, Nice little pieces here. This stuff cuts like butter, it's fantastic. We've got um, here an example of the jigs that uh, Tom Fitzgerald, who designed this line in the first place, is so well known for. Uh, this is just made with some 0.05 chipboard. It's good material to use, very cheap, and for something disposable like a, like a, uh, a jig, it's just fine. Um, we'll work with this a little, a little later on. I'll show you how it's meant to go together. And it makes the what would be quite tedious steps in the process a lot less so. We've got some bagged strip wood over here. And these are pre-cut, uh, or in some cases at least prescribed for you. You can go through and cut these apart. But they are labeled for your convenience. Uh, lots of different sizes, dimensions here go into this kit. And I remember my old uh, red and plaid box craftsman kit days too well to want to do that to anybody else. Or what you got when you open the box is just a pile of sticks of different sizes and shapes and it's up to you to figure out what's what. We try to give you a little more guidance on that. And then I've got here a couple of different kinds of roofing. The kit ordinarily comes with this uh, tar paper simulated uh, material, but I like these with a shingled roof. Uh, it's probably less than prototypical for uh, the Rio Grande or the Rio Grande Southern, certainly who didn't do anything they didn't have to do. But I have these shingles lying around, uh, left over from a different kit, and I think I may use these on the example model. We'll see when we get there. Oh, there's one more piece that I neglected to show you. It is what we call uh, flashing material. Uh, it's kind of a, it's called clayed paper, and it has an adhesive back to it. In this kit, we use it to make hinges. Um, we could make hinges a lot of different ways. This really paints up nicely uh, with, uh, with metallic paint. Looks really good when applied to the model, and it's pretty easy to work with. I'm looking forward to showing you that step in the process when we get there, but small piece, important detail. Talk about the tools and materials that we recommend for assembling this kit. In the first place, you'll need a good set of tweezers. I have a couple of different sets that I use here. Um, we've got the sort of bent end tweezers and the straight ones. These are great. They will help you to handle small pieces of wood in the process of making the kit. We recommend uh, for glue application, we've got some glue here. We just use uh, wood glue. I like the Type Bond brand, but there are many other options. But for application of that glue, nice quality toothpicks will do well for you. And then we always have little scraps of wood lying around the shop, and uh, I much prefer these to say a piece of paper 
for holding bits of wood glue um, as you work. We also use standard X-Acto knife, brand new clean uh, number 11 blade here from X-Acto. That'll come in handy. We recommend sandpaper or if you prefer, as I do, little emery sanding sticks here. A couple of different grits on each side. We use these to take the nubbins off of the pieces of wood. You'll see that, for example, pieces on this sheet are still in the carrier. It makes it protects them for shipping. It makes it a little easier to find and, and they stay together. But you can see right there, for example, there is a little nub of wood left over to hold them into uh, this fret. And when you take the pieces out, part of it will stay on the fret and part of it will be on the piece and you want to be able to take that off. Then we need paint and or stain and we'll use a little of both. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use a couple of star brand paints. Our friends at PBL. Uh, we're going to use number STR32, DNRGW Jersey Cream, and STR33, DNRGW Trim Brown. This will produce the very standard uh, DNRGW RGS line side structure look. Great paint, goes on well. And then for the pieces that are not painted, including in this case the, the foundation bits, we're going to use uh, some driftwood stain from Hunterline. This is great stuff. Got a selection here of painting tools for applying stain, nothing fancy. It is an ultra cheap dollar store 20 pack uh, variety pack of brushes sort of brush. It's just a matter of transferring the liquid to the wood. It doesn't have to be fancy at all. I've got my uh, trusty paint holder there, palette, and then uh, a selection of nicer brushes that I use for detail work. We'll probably use these to apply the paint uh, to the structure. There's some pretty tight little corners. Um, I also use brush cleaner. Makes the job of cleaning the brush in between uh, much easier. And then if we do the shingle roof, remains to be seen, but if we do, I'll show you how we use markers, artist markers, uh, in lots of shades of gray and brown to make for a pretty realistic looking roof, which we'll then tone down with a wash of the weathering mix after the fact. But this really is about all you need to construct the kit. The balance of the video today will be about painting and prep. We're going to paint and prep a few things. And typically, we'll do the, this paint and prep while the materials are still, the pieces rather, are still in the carriers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just makes things easier to hold and handle. It does mean that there's a little bit of touch up that will need to be done on the edges after we cut the pieces free from the frets. But for a variety of reasons, uh, one of them being that when you apply wet things to thin wood like this, they like to warp. We will do it this way instead of uh, cutting it out first. It just holds things straighter, makes them easier to find later, uh, just tidier all around. And this is the way we prefer to do it. You do what you would like to do. We're going to do some staining first. The pieces we have on this sheet here would not have been painted. These are uh, the ceiling, joists, and braces the floor. We have a couple of other pieces over on uh, sheet number two over here that we will just apply the uh, Hunter Lion driftwood stain to. Also to mitigate warping, you want to apply the stain to both sides uh, of the piece. So we'll just start working on that here for you. And then as quickly as we can, you can see it's already beginning to bow there. Look at that. We're going to turn it back over. We're going to work on the other side. This is your first kit of this kind, working with real wood and thin slices. You'll have a strong temptation to panic as you do this prep and watch your nice little kit curl up into a little ball like a cat. Fear not, it always works out in the end. Bring in the next piece that we need to work on. Okay, some of this would also not have been painted. Um, specifically, I'm looking at some of the trim pieces here. These are going to go in or near the door. You can see that this plywood's already a little bit darker, so it's gonna take the stain a bit differently. This just adds to the variability in the kit, though. It makes a nice effect. The other pieces that need to be stained are stripwood pieces. 
I'm going to put the cap on my stain here. Would not be the first time I've knocked it over, and I'm not in the mood to clean that up tonight. All right, we have roof and floor joists here, and we have footings. Now these, we are going to cut apart before we stain them, because we would just have to instantly go back and stain the ends again if we were not to do this. And while we're at it, we may as well do this properly. So you can see we've got the scribe lines marked for you. Where cutting this out is just a matter of working gently with your X-Acto knife. Nice sharp new one, so a little bit of patience and a little bit of pressure, and we'll have these pieces apart. There we go. There we are. Nice clean cut. I'll work on the rest of these and then come back to you. Fell prey to the classic blunder of pressing take a photo instead of start a video. Look, we have painted, or stained rather, the foundation pieces. Gotten all of these, got the ends, applied uh, a different amount of stain to each one just by natural uh, outcomes of just sort of slathering it on there. So we'll have some nice variation uh, looking very natural and weathered as if it's been out in the elements over time. Thought I'd show you too what we're doing about the curling wood. I do have a sheet of glass that I usually use, but right now it's over on my workbench with something else on top of it and I didn't feel like clearing it off. So instead I've got a couple of pieces of uh, MDF here that are cut out of a sheet. Um, no, I, I don't make tombstones on the side. These were uh, windows cut into, I think a mandala that I made for my wife's Christmas present. Um, but we had them around. That and a couple of clamps and put your pieces that are curling up in between. Leave it there overnight, everything will dry. The result will be flat and stained wood, which will be helpful as we go to put it together. Um, you saw earlier it was looking a bit like a Pringle. That's not gonna go together very well. On to painting. We're gonna be covering a fair amount of area here. So rather than use my detail brushes, I'm gonna use something a little beefier. Um, you can airbrush these. That's probably the right way to do it. I don't. Uh, I've had really good results, especially with the Star brand paint, with uh, brush painting, and that's what we're going to do. So we're starting with the STR32 DNRGW Jersey Cream. That is the sort of main color of the shed. And then you have the dark brown trim. So, we've shaken this a good deal to mix it up. And we'll now lay on a coat. Painting these while on the fret just provides you with a much better handle uh, for controlling the pieces. And if you paint over the edges a little bit, it doesn't matter. That's staying behind on the fret. Stick. All right, I'll proceed to put a paint, uh, a coat of paint rather, on the rest of the pieces of side and back and trim that should receive this color. Most of the trim will be the brown. I'll come back and show you that, but these fascia pieces here, for example, will be the cream. So I'll get to that and then come back and show you when we're done. A coat of yellowy Jersey cream on all the things that that we can now come back and do the door and some of the trim in the darker brown. This is uh, DNRGW Trim Brown STR33 from Star Brand. We'll come back in with this darker brown and get some of these trim pieces. All right, I think we've got a coat of brown and everything that requires it. One of the few distinctive features of this otherwise pretty ubiquitous line side building is the external bracing. Uh, I've always found that pretty attractive. It's like the, uh, the box cars that you might see from the steam era and standard gauge with that external bracing. It adds just a little bit more visual interest 
to prepare these to go into the uh, the kit and the build when the time is right, we're going to apply a coat of the cream to these. Because they are strip wood and a little fiddly to work with, I put them on a piece of tape. Use that as a handle. My hands end up a little less uh, Jersey cream at the end of the process because I do it this way. Excellent. That is pretty good coverage of that one side. I'm going to lay this back down and go along and make sure that everything's laying pretty flat and that the more egregious puddles of paint are picked up. The wood's going to do a good job of dealing with that and the paint itself will work out well, but I'm going to help it as much as I can. The other thing we'll do this week before we wrap up is uh, prepare the jig for use. You can see that it's got uh, some cutting in it and then also some scribed lines. And we will prepare it by folding along that scribed line. The jig has a front and a back. You can see there's a relief cut in here so the pieces will sit in here and then some notches where you'll put the outside bracing. And anyway, very clever, makes the thing go together very well. We're grateful that Tom created it. Now, um, to glue these pieces together, you'll notice that in general, the back side is smaller than the front. So we're gonna put glue on the back of the back side, the inside part here. This is another of my very cheap value paint brushes here from a craft store 20 pack. When I have a lot of glue to apply to a big area in a short period of time, I will usually use this instead of a toothpick. Perfect. We'll now press this together and squash it a bit. Wood glue holds very well on this uh, chipboard, which is really glorified cardboard. And there we have a jig ready for use. I'll show you next time around how that is to be used. We'll clean off some of the excess here. Great, I think we're good to go. Leave that to dry also overnight. It'll be to be dry in a few minutes, but we won't use it until tomorrow. All right, all set. Well, Seth, thank you so very much for, uh, for, for doing the segment tonight. We'll look forward to seeing what you're gonna show us next week. Thanks, I enjoyed doing it. Fantastic. Thanks so much for doing this. We appreciate it, Seth. You bet.